every Nintendo series somehow has an awful timeline, except for one, the goddamn plumber. There is no official Mario timeline, or even a half-decent fan made one. So, let's solve this problem. And to avoid the previous tragedy, is draw a straight line. Uh-oh. <laughs> this time, I have an expo marker, which I can erase with ease. You're fucking with me. All right, we're gonna start where all of our timelines start. That's right, before we could subscribe to YouTube channels, we were all fetuses, and Mario and Luigi are no different. And this is where we find our first split in the timeline. On one split, we have the Mario movie, where Mario and Luigi's parents coitus in Brooklyn, and the Mario movie happens. If the fact that the timeline has split already is concerning to you, that's good. That means your fear emotion is working. And then there's the main timeline, where Mario and Luigi were conceived by his papa, whose name is unknown, and his mama, Mia. But before Mario and Luigi could be born properly, Kamek rips them out of the womb over the skies of Yoshi's Island. B what? This is the canonical opening to the game Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo, and is the earliest point in the timeline. Yoshi would successfully get Mario and Luigi back in the womb, and the boys were able to be born normally. But this would cause a couple very important things to start in the Mario timeline. First off, it would establish the rivalry between the bros and Bowser. And it would establish Kamek can do whatever he wants to mothers. Baby Bowser and Kamek would attack the Yoshis many more times, causing the remaining Yoshi games to take place, also causing a split in the timeline we'll return to later. But while the timeline was splitting, Mario's childhood would begin, and his parents would disappear. It was super early on in Mario and Luigi's childhood, and they only ever learned their mother's name before they were dropped off with Toadsworth, the man who raised all of the humans in the Mushroom Kingdom, apparently. And yet, Nintendo still forgets about him. To be fair, though, he wasn't that great of a caretaker, because he immediately loses all of his kids that he's in charge of. A time machine appears, adding time travel to the timeline right off the bat. Time travel? Already? That's good. This is where the child portion of Mario and Luigi Partners in Time takes place. The existence of time travel will cause problems on any timeline, and this will be no different. But I don't want to fucking do this two minutes into the video, so we're going to wait until we reach the adult portion of Partners in Time. All right, we can finally move on to the bulk of the Mario timeline, when he finally reaches adulthood and is immediately drafted into the Vietnam War. Huh? Mario Bombs Away is a Game & Watch game about the Vietnam War if Mario was in it murdering innocent civilians. He would make it back from the war alive, and after this is when Mario would obtain all of his other jobs. You know the ones, doctor, construction worker, cement factory worker, boxing referee, circus ringleader, typing educator, and sex educator. Most important of these jobs is of course construction worker, because this is what he was doing during the game Donkey Kong. This game is interesting for the timeline because this Donkey Kong is actually Cranky Kong. Kong, the old mentor slash hater Kong from the Donkey Kong Country games, and is the father to Donkey Kong Jr. and grandpa to modern day Donkey Kong. But this Mario is still the same Mario, which sets us up for a weird series of events. Modern day Donkey Kong is very clearly an adult gorilla, and Mario is 24 to 25 in the modern day games. And if we assume Mario is working construction at the youngest possible at 16 years of age, and if we assume that Donkey Kong is the youngest possible for an adult gorilla at eight years of age, that means that if Donkey Kong is going to barely reach maturity, Donkey Kong Jr. would have had to have a child while these games were happening. So... Donkey Kong Jr. has unprotected sex and becomes a teen dad. It just makes sense! This obviously places a bunch of stress upon Donkey Kong Jr., especially since there is clearly no mother in the picture. And as evidenced in the Mario Choose Your Own Adventure book, Doors to Doom, Donkey Kong Jr. snaps and hits Donkey Kong the Third. This happened an unknown number of times until Cranky Kong finally witnessed it one day. He begged Donkey Kong Jr. to stop, but it just continued to happen. He had been broken down by his difficult single gorilla parent life, and this was all he had to let it out, which forced Cranky's hand taking Donkey Kong the Third to Donkey Kong Country, the island. The home location of the Kong tribe where the Donkey Kong Country games take place. Donkey Kong Jr., however, was annexed from the Kong family and was forced to live alone with nothing to do except regret his actions. Now that we've established that, Mario would eventually get fired from all of these jobs for complete lack of medical license as a doctor, but for the others, racial misconduct. What? What is happening? I know you don't think it should be this way, but it has to be. 
And while it may not seem like this would cause a time split, it does because of WarioWare. You see, the timeline has to split here because if Wario is gonna have the time to make and run a company, he can't be distracted by trying to out-ass Mario. So we have to make a time split based off of Mario's racially charged comments in the past. In this split, Luigi takes a video of Mario doing the racist things, and it is posted to the internet by Luigi to be found later causing Peach to want nothing to do with Mario and cause him to become a nobody on the street. This allows room for Wario to actually become one of the richest men on the planet, which could not happen on the original timeline. Now, on the normal timeline, Mario's first girlfriend, Pauline, does still find out about all this, so she leaves Mario so he doesn't damage her campaign to become mayor of New Donk City. This, however, damages Mario, seeing as they were together for a while, so Mario goes on his first vacation to Sarasa Land. This is where the events of Mario Land 1 and 2 take place, where Mario briefly dates Daisy before unceremoniously dumping her on Luigi. This is also where Wario comes in on the regular timeline, being the villain of Super Mario Land 2. All the Wario Land games also take place here, where he commits regular crimes rather than white-collar crimes in the other timeline. The WarioWare timeline does end with Wario creating a cryptocurrency called Wario Coin and then rug pulls, causing the collapse of society. Does it seem like I'm bouncing around a lot and the timeline's hard to follow? That's weird, isn't it? After Mario's self-reflection vacation, he abandons, mostly suppresses, his racist ways and was prepared to hold down a job. So he and his brother Luigi finally take a plumbing job. And they're able to actually keep this job for a decent amount of time. This job frequently left them underneath the Mushroom Kingdom. So when Bowser mounted his first attack against the Mushroom Kingdom, they were underground. And when Mario and Luigi came back from their shift and saw a bunch of bricks in a straight line leading directly to Bowser's castle, they leaped into action. And save the Mushroom Kingdom for the first time. We just made it to the first Super Mario game. Are you afraid yet? In celebration of the Savior Mario, the very first Mario Kart would be held. However, a toad, after reading the title of the game Super Mario Bros, just assumed that Super Mario was his full name, so the first event was called Super Mario Kart. The Kongs were invited to this event, but since they all fled to Donkey Kong Country, the island, the only person who was able to receive their invitation was Donkey Kong Jr. So he was the only Kong at the first Mario Kart. Cranky didn't have time to tell Mario of what had gone down with Donkey Kong Jr. before they left for Donkey Kong Country the Island, so they were not aware of Donkey Kong Jr.'s problematic behaviors. Donkey Kong Jr., however, had only become more insane ever since he lost his son and his father. So he intends to sabotage the Super Mario Kart event by sneaking Bowser in there with him. He gives the other invitation, which was intended for Cranky Kong, to Bowser, allowing the man who had just terrorized the Mushroom Kingdom to race alongside their heroes. When this was noticed, they launched an investigation, and after figuring out that he had Cranky Kong's invitation, they quickly figured out that Donkey Kong Jr. was the only one who could have brought him. And after figuring that out, they hit Donkey Kong Jr. with a car. What? Am I just supposed to move on? And Bowser was able to get out of there scot-free because he's a political figure and we don't do anything to them. I do this much mental gymnastics to explain Bowser in the spinoffs one time. There's like 30 Mario spinoffs. After all this, the Kong family and the Mushroom Kingdom would make up, and Donkey Kong III would then be able to attend any future kart races, parties, and sporting events. After all this, Bowser would attack again, causing Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels to take place. Nothing really changes except this time to celebrate their victory, the first ever Mario Party takes place. And Bowser just crashes the party, and instead of causing any real problems, he just causes communism. And around the time he caused communism, he would also have sex. Remember that? Shortly after this, Mario would fall asleep, and Super Mario Bros. 2 would happen because the events of those games are all a dream. This also brings enemies like bob and ninjas into existence, because Mario's dreams influence reality. When Mario wakes up from his dream, he finds out that his brother Luigi won a mansion, which would of course cause the events of Luigi's Mansion to take place. Most of this game is unimportant, but this would be the introduction of Professor Egad, an elderly genius scientist who spent most of his life studying ghosts. Egad is incredibly smart, and in between his ghost hunts created some of the most powerful items in the Mushroom Kingdom, including the Poltergust, 
Flood, and the Magic Paintbrush, the latter two leading to the events of Super Mario Sunshine. In Super Mario Sunshine, Peach decides to reward Mario for all of his help and takes him on a vacation to Delfino Isle. Bowser, however, hatched a scheme to get Mario arrested on this island by framing him for vandalism. And this was the purpose of the sex. Bowser Jr. was born as Bowser's only biological son. Bowser, being the great parent he is, did something to Bowser Jr.'s mom such that she's completely out of the picture now. He then convinced his child that Peach was his mom and said the only way to get his mom back was to put Mario in jail. So he gave his son the magic paintbrush, which I guess he got from Egad somehow. Either way, once Bowser had acquired the magic paintbrush, he had Bowser Jr. paint himself black all up and down. Racism is not funny. Racism is not funny. And now that he is black Mario, he can commit vandalism as Mario and get him arrested. Luckily, Mario found Flood, which I guess Egad just left on the island and was able to beat back Bowser and his small child, saving Delfino Isle. Once they returned, they party and carded. This time, Bowser managed to convince everyone that it was Bowser Jr.'s fault all that happened and even got to attend the golf event that they held around that time as well. This, however, was all an incredibly obvious ploy that Mario didn't notice and Bowser manages to make his way into Peach's castle and turn into a conveniently built, well-crafted overworld for the game Super Mario 64. This game is uneventful. Mario grabs Bowser, spins him around, and sends him into a bomb a bunch of times. After this, though, something interesting would happen. Something unforeseen. An event that would shake the Mushroom Kingdom to its very core. Waluigi would play tennis. Wario would invite Waluigi to join him in Mario Tennis, and this would be the first time he ever appeared. Wario had proven himself at least somewhat well-behaved over the past few years, so they figured him bringing a friend wouldn't be that bad. And since Bowser snuck in to play again, they were much more focused on that rather than Waluigi. This gave Waluigi the opportunity to join in on the third Mario Party. This Mario Party was unique because it actually had a significant prize for the winner. The Millennium Star is a fabled star that is only birthed every 1,000 years. You mean to tell me there's at least a thousand years of history before this? No further questions. Whoever obtains it is destined to become the superstar of the universe. The competition goes normally, and everyone competes, including Waluigi. But right before the winner is determined, Bowser crashes the party and attempts to steal the Millennium Star for himself and successfully knocks out everyone except for Waluigi, who successfully beats back Bowser and gets the Millennium Star for himself, but greedily runs off with it. Bowser asks Mario and his friends to avenge him, to which they silently agree and they go off and defeat Waluigi and finally obtain the Millennium Star for themselves. And going through all of that was just to explain why Bowser was allowed at the next Mario Kart and Waluigi wasn't. Next up is New Soup. It just kind of fits here. Let's move on. Shortly after that, though, yet another new villain would appear. With Bowser having been the only issue for years and years, the Mushroom Kingdom's guard was brought down around all other situations, and the evil witch Cackletta was able to easily enter the castle with no issues and steal Peach's voice. Bowser was actually planning yet another attack on the Mushroom Kingdom right at this time, but once reaching the throne room and finding that Peach's voice had been stolen, decides that it's not worth kidnapping her without her voice. Which calls into question Bowser's reason for kidnapping Peach at all. This would cause Bowser to seek revenge on Cackletta and team up with the Mario Bros. This leads to the events of Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga, introducing me to the series and having Bowser team up with the brothers again, which of course successfully explains why he was allowed to play golf and tennis. The Bowser's minion thing in the remake is also canon and happens here, probably. I can't be bothered to check this mode was garbage. That cube then comes down from space and then leaves. And once it leaves, we'd finally reached the dreaded moment of time travel, which is actually not a problem for this timeline. What do you mean this isn't a problem? This is like the one thing I was prepared for. This is still important because it introduces the babies into the games who would start appearing in the spinoffs. So every time a spinoff happens, someone goes back in time to pick up some children so they can drive a car despite not being old enough to have a driver's license. After this, they play baseball, which thankfully Bowser is genuinely a villain in this game, so it just fits. Mario 3D Land would introduce the Tanuki leaves to the series. Mario would meet Sonic and play sports, making all of the Sonic timeline canon here. I'm not touching that. Next up, Bowser adopts 
somehow. Super Mario Brothers 3 would finally introduce the Koopalings to the series, who would be a recurring set of enemies for Mario. Most of them don't affect much of the timeline, but Wendy would teach Mario with sexes. Shortly after this, a big sword would fall into Peach's castle, setting off the events of Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, where Bowser teams up again, giving yet another excuse for Bowser to be allowed to compete in Mario Kart Double Dash, and even let one of his kids of questionable origin compete in Mario Party. Although, Bowser competing in these events is getting increasingly controversial. He just helps out sometimes when things are bad for him as well as us. So it's not like he's doing this out of the goodness of his heart. It's because he keeps being weaker than whatever the new threat is. So everyone got mad and played soccer. This was assumedly an incredibly bloody event, I think. What the fuck is going on? Am I even somewhat close to being right at this point? I mean, why else would everyone be mad in Mario Strikers? It was literally brother versus brother. It is a civil war. But if I go that far, does that mean, do I have to ask if Yoshi committed war crimes? What is, does any of this mean? Is any of this worth it? And Waluigi, crotch chops. New Super Mario Bros. 2 is next. Nothing happens in this game. Why did they make this? Mario Party can happen for the sixth time. This one might be a dream, technically. I don't know. Luigi's Mansion can happen again. So the next Mario Party, Luigi can bring a boo, I guess. Super Mario World also happens. Winter Olympics. Does it even matter where I put this thing? <sighs> is this just what happens to Nintendo every time? Putting these games on any type of timeline is just ridiculous. No matter what I do, there will be holes and dissatisfaction with every placement. In the last video, I reprimanded Nintendo for seemingly putting no effort into any of their timelines. If you didn't see it, you just have to know that Nintendo timelines tend to weave, branch off, and generally just fuck around with any sense of continuity or storytelling thrown out the window, leaving us with these dissatisfying webs of nonsense. Maybe it is pointless. I mean, just look at this. I try to keep the timeline in as straight a line as possible, only letting movies and spinoffs split the timeline, and it still looks like this. Maybe Nintendo was right. Maybe making a timeline is hard, and there really isn't anything you can do to keep a timeline in a straight line. Is what a coward would say! That's right, all of this makes sense without question. I wouldn't second guess any of it for a second. Next up is where Mario and Luigi Bowser's inside story would obviously fall, starring me as the main villain. And Bowser does yet again have to help out the Mushroom Kingdom, perfectly explaining why Bowser's in Mario Kart DS. It's all so easy. No further questions from you. This of course leads to yet another civil war. That's right. We doubled down on the Civil War. When the dust settles, they Mario Party on a boat this time. It all just makes sense if you just think about it. You just gotta think with your mind, right? And then they go to the Olympics again. For no reason. Mario loves sport. Then new Super Mario Brothers Wii can just slot in right here. Mario Party 8. That's right. You thought MC Ballyhoo would split the timeline, but I won't let him. He may have tried his best, but it wasn't enough. I won't let it split. Super Mario Galaxy! This game doesn't even canonically happen! That's right, at the end of Super Mario Galaxy, Rosalina resets the fucking universe! So while we could let this recontextualize the whole timeline, you know what? We put it right here! You know why? Because some explanation is better than no explanation! It's so easy, Nintendo. You just have to try. And since this game isn't canon, we can just have Bowser be a Mario Kart again. I think. But it doesn't matter what I think, because it's happening! Super Mario Galaxy, again. Just put it here. Don't question where Starship Mario went. It's gone. Don't think about it. Next, Mario dances. And since Waluigi is a villain in this game, it masterfully explains why Waluigi isn't present in Mario Kart 7. It just makes sense, because Waluigi's in that one, and this one is not. It was the planet from the beginning. Also, Bowser's allowed to be here because of Dream Team. I haven't actually played this game, but it probably makes sense and also results in tennis. Super Mario 3D World. Bowser is fucking hot. Olympics. Baseball is also a sport. That happens again. Captain Toad has to happen at some point. Super Princess Peach is when Peach learns about sex. Mario Party 9 is when I learned about sex. I love you, Magic Koopa. Luigi's Mansion 3. I am the lord of the timeline. New Soup Wii U is all, it all makes sense. Everything here makes sense. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Mario gets big, which makes it okay for Bowser to be here. Bowser then gets really big in response, causing Mario Party 10. Super Mario Odyssey happens next. Mario reunites Pauline, but she doesn't bring up the race stuff because Mario's political influence and she doesn't want to risk losing her marriage. New Dog City. Since the ending of Mario Odyssey is somewhat friendly between Mario and Bowser, this leads right into Mario Kart 8, Supernaturally, which also connects us to the Zelda timeline. All of it's connected. You may ask if I'm the Lord of the Timeline, 
How is this other timeline connected to the Mario timeline? Why the fuck would I know that? Olympics again, tennis again, Mario Party again, golf again, and finally the most recent point on the timeline, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now you may be saying right now, what about all the things you forgot? Fuck you, I remembered! And the Mario, the sports mix, the Mario sports day mix. The mechanic turned everyone paper, and paper Mario. And there's also Final Fantasy characters that also mix. And since they all mix, how is that to be real? He comes to existence. His paper, his dick, his paper. He go, he go missing, disappear. He goes to the hotel, the hotel mar. Peach, X slime, tentacle rabbits. There's rabbits, but they kill, they kill the rabbits with guns. And you get the time machine. This all happened on the. PCs, but nobody was Should I have jacked off? Probably not. They made dumbass PC games in the 90s, and the time machine went over here, and everything fucking sucked. The problem left the Super Mario Brothers. Doesn't make any sense. They call him King Koopa. Is that a different guy? Or is it Bowser? I can't solve it. It's too hard. Remember? Remember when they, they go down the drain in the opening of the supermarket? The answers, they were down there the whole time! So, that was a fucking terrible idea. Why would anyone try to do that? Well... This is it, the official Mario timeline. If you have any problems with it, feel free to comment them. Uh, just know that I will read all of them and they will make me cry. <laughs>